Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk about two important data structures in JavaScript, sets and weak sets. Most of us are accustomed to using arrays and objects to do pretty much everything, and we don't look beyond it. But believe me or not, there are other data structures available in JavaScript, like uh, sets, maps, weak sets, and there are other few as well. And uh, JavaScript is going to keep adding more data structures as well. And each data structure has its own use. So you should not be using just any data structure. You should find a right data structure uh, for your particular condition. So today we're going to talk about uh, sets and weak sets. We're going to lo look at its syntax, its applications, and some cool tricks. And welcome to Texted Tutorials. So let's understand sets. Um, one of the first thing is sets are actually reference data type. So in JavaScript, you have two data types, primitive data types and reference data type. Uh, primitives are single value, non-mutable. You have string numbers, Boolean. You know, these are primitive. And you have arrays and objects, which are reference data type. The sets are like arrays. They are reference data type. And the important characteristic of sets is uh, they allow you to store unique values of any data types. It can be also object, right? You can, which means you cannot have duplicate values inside a set. It basically won't allow. It. So in a nutshell, uh, sets are nothing but uh, a unique lists. All right, so to define it, I'm gonna use uh, comparison with array. So let's start. So I'm going to define an array, and this is an empty array. And this syntax is called array literal. I can also use um, array like this using a constructor. And this is a constructor. Now, when it comes to set, um, you have to use a constructor. You, it, does, it doesn't have a literal syntax. So let's create our first set, my set equal to, as I said, you cannot use literal. There is no literal. So I have to use a constructor. And this is how I create an empty set. If I want to look at it, if I do console.log my set, I should see it. Uh, it has a size property. And this is an empty set. Right now, it doesn't have any values, so the entries are zero. Another important thing is you cannot access set like you would access arrays. So for example, I can add, uh, simply add a value in array like this. So this would add, um, at the zeroth index, it would add a value one. I cannot do that in set. I have to use a, a prototype method. And as you can see inside the proto, I have a bunch of methods available here. And one of them is add. So I have to I use this add method uh, to add value into this set. So the, to do it, I would simply do my set uh, dot add and add one here. And so now if I run it, I would have size as one, and you would have the, the value also, which is one. Now let's add, let's add another value. So I can do my set.add2. Run it, I would have two values. As you can see here, it's not, it doesn't have the square brackets around. It has more like object kind of literal syntax. Obviously, you cannot use it to define a set, but I'm just pointing out that um, in internally, it won't show you like that. And the cool, cool thing about sets is that uh, when, I, when I run a method, it will return the set back, which means I can actually chain methods here. So I can add two values by just chaining add methods. I can actually delete a value because it's also a prototype value. And since I deleted one, now it has only two left. And I can actually clear the entire set 
by using clear method. Let me just remove the delete. So I added two value and I'm just clearing the whole thing, which means it's gonna empty the set. And just like arrays have lengths, uh, sets have size. So, so it'll give me two. Now I don't always have to add it like this. I can actually create an array and um, convert that array into set if I want to. So to do that, let's use this array. So I'm just gonna do one, two, and three. It has three elements. And I have to simply pass this array into a set as an argument when I create uh, this set. So if I did this, it would actually convert this array into set. Let's look at what happens. All right, so I have a set with three elements. And remember, you set only takes an argument, uh, which is something that is iterable. So arrays are iterable, so it will take arrays as an argument. It won't take an op JavaScript object, which is not iterable. You have to take uh, iterable object and pass into it. Or I can simply pass it like this as well. And now, if I add more elements to it, so I already have one, two, and three, and I'm adding two more. So it will still show one, two, and three because one and two are already there. So if I try to add it, it won't add it because it's already there. And since the characteristic of set is it only holds the unique values, it won't uh, repeat any numbers here. Another thing, uh, another important thing to remember is sets are iterable objects like arrays. So if I look at its prototype, you would see symbol.iterator which means you can iterate through it like arrays. And you can use for off loop, for let val of my set, and I can print this values. And this should, this should print one, two, three. So you must be like, uh, are sets actually arrays? No, they are not arrays because there is no ordering, as you can see. Uh, they're also not key value pairs like objects. So they are something of its own. Uh, you could iterate them like arrays. Uh, that is because it has that, uh, if, I, if I look at it, it, it has its entries, which it holds it like, like arrays. That's why you can iterate through it. But actually they're not um, arrays. And unlike arrays, uh, arrays have um, very cool, lots of methods available like reduce, map, reverse, sort, all kind of stuff, right? However, set doesn't have them. That. that is because it doesn't have ordering. However, uh, sets can be useful when you wanna have two sets and you wanna intersect, you wanna merge them to make a union or you find the differences that's where it's very useful and i believe in a next version of javascript they are introducing these functions into set uh, like union intersect because it has a delete method it makes it very easier uh, for it to create unions and intersect so if you if that's your application sets are perfect but if you want that rich functionality of arrays uh, also you want to access the element as specific indexes and things like that, arrays are better for you. Now let's look at a cool application of set. Set would allow you to remove duplicate values from the array. So let's say if I have an array which has one, two, two, and three. Now if I convert this array into set by doing new set and just passing this array, I would I would have a set with elements one, two, and three. So it would not add the the duplicate two, right? But I still get the set. I it's not in a, it's not an array. And if my objective is to get the array back, I would I have to get um, I have to convert the set into an array. And you can do it simply by using a spread operator. So this would be set into an array. So I would get 
an array with non only unique values. All right, so let's try it. So I get one, two, and three. And in an interview, somebody asks you, you can show this trick and they will be impressed. Um, you don't always have to use a spread operator. You can also use a new method called array.from. So if I run it, I would also get the same thing. So array.from is also very useful. So let's look at our uh, next data structure, weak sets. Why do we need weak sets? Uh, are the sets, the regular sets, not are too strong for us? Uh, well, the jokes apart, uh, uh, weak sets are also very useful and they're very different than sets. So let's look at it. Uh, so the first difference is you would use const ws equal to also a constructor, but instead of set, we would use weak set. All right, you can add. Uh, so it also has an add method. So I can say ws add, uh, but unlike sets where you can add primitive values, here you can only add objects. So if I add, let's say one here and run this, it would says, it would say invalid value used in weak set, but I can add a one, which is an object. Now, just like sets, you can also pass uh, an array, basically an iterable object with keys, uh, with values as objects, but no primitive values. So I can do this. This is a valid syntax. Uh, so I can pass an iterable object. However, weak sets are not iterable objects. So if I try to iterate through it, so let's do it. So if I use for off loop, let well off ws and try to console log uh, the val, this would not work. Uh, ws is not iterable. So weak sets are not iterable objects, should I say. And if I console log the weak set, you would see some prototype methods which are much less than sets. So it has add, delete, and has. So add, as we looked at, can add, you can add things to weak sets. You can delete things from weak sets and has would check if it exists or not. Okay, so only three. And the constructor is basically nothing but a constructor which allows you to create the, the weak set. Now, what is the application of uh, a weak? All right, so one of these application I found was uh, that, let's say if you have some class and which has some constructor which sets the initial things inside, and then you have a method uh, which basically does something, right? Now, if you know JavaScript, uh, you can access the method directly using, uh, because it's a prototype method and all the methods are public so you can directly access without running constructor. So if you want to make sure that someone has ran, ran the constructor before they, before they run the method, uh, you can do something like this where you can have a <clears throat> create a weak set. Then inside the constructor, add this to the weak set, which adds the whole object inside as a reference. And then uh, when you run, when somebody runs the method, make check if if it has this reference to that that object, right? That class. If it doesn't, then don't let let them uh, run this method, right? Because uh, that means they are directly accessing the method. So uh, this is kind of a unique. Uh, and by the way, I also have a tutorial on maps and weak maps which is also very useful data structure. If you want to try it out, I'll provide a link here. And I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you did, please like, don't forget to like, uh, like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. And you can support the channel via Patreon. I'll provide a link here. And you can also translate this video. This is very important. Um, you know, I want you to translate this video into your native language so uh, people from your country can um, learn as well. It's very simple. You can um, the instruction instructions are in in the description at the bottom of it. Uh, you can follow it. And once you translate it, let me know so I can give you the credit inside the video. And thank you.